हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल मैथ्स एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ट्यूटोरियल्स टुडे इन आवर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू नो अबाउट द माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब्स एंड इट्स क्लासिफिकेशन सो फर्स्टली व्हाट इज माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब माइक्रोवेव ट्यूब्स आर कंस्ट्रक्टेड टू ओवरकम द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द कन्वेंशनल ट्यूब्स दे मेक यूज ऑफ द ट्रांजिट टाइम इफेक्ट that is large transit time is required for their operation the basic principle operation of the microwave tube involves the transfer of power from a dc voltage to a source of ac voltage by means of the current density modulated electron beam now the next topic is regarding the classification of microwave tubes the microwave tubes are mainly divided into two types the linear beam type or the o type and cross beam type or the m type again these are subdivided as the cavity based and slow wave structured now the cavity based is again classified into two types the two cavity klystron and the reflex klystron now the slow wave structured is again classified into helix twt TWT represents the traveling wave tube. Now, the cross beam type or the M type is classified into the magnetron. So now, let's know about the linear beam tube. In this type of tube, the magnetic field is in parallel with the electric field, and here the electrons travel from cathode to anode. Now, the cross beam tube in this the magnetic field and electric field are perpendicular to each other now in the linear beam tubes there are cavity based tubes so firstly let's know about the klystrons klystrons are the special type of vacuum tubes that find applications as the amplifiers and the oscillators in the microwave frequencies so the principal operation is velocity modulation so this device can be used for the amplification of the microwave signals as well as for the oscillation of microwave signals so the klystrons were developed in 1937 and the kinetic energy of a moving electron beam is utilized for the amplification and generation of the microwave signals So now in this diagram you can see a two cavity klystron amplifier so firstly let's know about the parts of this two cavity klystron amplifier in the brief this is the rf input which is given as the input to the first cavity or the buncher cavity this is the cathode which is used to emit the electrons and it emits the electrons uniformly now this is the second cavity or the output cavity and also known as the catcher cavity these are the uniform electrons and after passing through the buncher cavity these electrons are formed into the electron bunches now this is the cathode voltage and this is the distance between the cavity gap so now here you can see the l which is the drift space or the distance between the buncher cavity and the catcher cavity so now the distance here will become l plus d and here l plus d plus d which is l plus 2d here this represents the distance and this represents the time so the t0 is the time when the electrons enter the buncher cavity and t1 is the time when electrons exits the buncher cavity and here the t2 represents the electron bunches entering to the catcher cavity and t3 represents the electrons exit towards the catcher cavity the small voltage vo here represents the velocity of the uniform electrons and this vo represents the cathode voltage so please don't get confused with this so now let's know the operation of the cavity klystron two cavity klystron so the cathode emits the electrons as i told earlier and this electrons will reach to the first cavity with the uniform velocity 
Now, in the first cavity, the velocity of the electrons will be modulated by the input RF signal present in the first cavity and this is known as the velocity modulation. Because of the velocity modulation, electrons form the bunches. Now, because of this bunch formation, the density of electrons in the catcher cavity varies periodically with the time. That is, the electron beam contains the AC component of the current, which is known as the current modulation. Velocity modulation and current modulation are very important terms which are needed to be mentioned in this. Now, next of all these electrons will give up their energy in the second cavity. So now, there are three cases formed in this operation. The first case is when Vs is equal to V1 sin omega t, where Vs is the average voltage of the bunch cap. Then the electrons are injected from the cathode traveling with uniform velocity Vo and reaches the collector anode. Now the next case is when the positive half cycle of the RF input is applied to the buncher cavity that results electrons acceleration. In other words, the velocity of the electron increases which is greater than the Vo. In the next case is when negative half cycle of the RF input signal is applied to the buncher cavity. This results in the electron's deacceleration. In other words, the velocity of electron decreases, that is, it is less than the Vo. So now, this is the brief description of the operation of the two cavity klystron amplifier. Thank you for watching the video and in the next video, we will continue about the two cavity klystron amplifier apple gate diagram. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel.